sir. Thank you, Bishop. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I welcome everyone to this last session of our ministers, conference, workers, professional conference. And I thank the Lord for the theme we have, exceeding limits. From Friday to yesterday, Monday, and today, Tuesday, we've been talking of going higher, living higher, ministering higher. And as we come and wrap up everything, concluding today, we're talking about expanding limits, exceeding, extending, expanding limits. And I pray the limits of ministry in your life, in your church, in your ministry will be expanded in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we come before you. We come, Lord, in your presence. And we pray there will be nothing, there will be none between us and you in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that the word will come from your throne and flow into every heart and you lift us higher to higher grounds in Jesus' name. Amen. Where love and joy and light and peace and power abound. Lord, lift us up in such a way that our touching lives, our transforming lives and our going forth into the field will be productive and profitable and expansive in jesus name Amen. thank you lord because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray Amen. and the people of god say Amen. Amen. thank you very much god bless you as i've told you we're talking about expanding limits of evangelistic exploits and power evangelism this this evangelism normal evangelism this evangelism personal evangelism this evangelism the church goes out and then one by one we reach people through personal evangelism but there's something we call power evangelism what you find in the acts of the apostles is power evangelism look at chapter 2 power evangelism as the spirit of god came upon the disciples and they were speaking in tongues they said the people came around and said what's this and peter rose up and with the power the anointing they just received he declared the word three thousand came to the lord chapter three where chapter three that says in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i say unto you rise up and walk and the man rose up and he walked and the people looked at peter see something we never dreamt of and is an is Israelite is son of the soil, one of us. We understand about Christ, about the Messiah. We understand about Christ that came from heaven and those prodigious things happened. But one of us, Peter, a married man, a married um, apostle, and a minister of the gospel. And they were told after that, because of the message, and he told them, repent and be converted, so that your sins will be blotted out. The result of that is, we have 5,000 Acts for chapter 4, verse 4, coming in unto the Lord. It was power, evangelism. And as we come to chapter 5, now we told you and warned you, not only warned them, they threatened them that we should not speak in this name anymore. And now you feel Jerusalem, which your doctrine is power evangelism. Chapter 8 and Philip went down to Samaria and he spoke the word of God to them and preached Christ unto them. And the 
whole city they came to the lord because they saw those healings and they saw those people that were delivered that's power evangelism and here we come to chapter 9 Docas was raised from the dead and uh, near pick up your bed rise up and walk when the people saw the miracle that took place it says the whole city they came to the lord what i'm saying is as you look at the acts of the apostles it's not just ordinary evangelism yes personal evangelism they were scattered abroad and they went everywhere preaching the word yet what really turned the world around and what penetrated the whole uh, the whole of the nation and beyond that nation is power evangelism so as we talk about evangelistic exploits and we talk about power evangelism what the lord did through them he'll do through you i said he'll do through you and with power evangelism will reach forth and great will be the harvest of souls in this our time i'm looking at matthew chapter 24 reading from verse 14 Matthew chapter 24 verse 14 this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached that's prophecy and the prophecy is coming from the Lord Jesus Christ and if the prophecy given by Isaiah was fulfilled if the prophecy given by Jeremiah Ezekiel if those promises and prophecies were fulfilled Jesus the greatest Jesus the highest Jesus the very son of God he gives us the, the, the prophecy here and he says this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world in all the world there was no radio but jesus of course new radio will come is the very son of god is omniscient he has all knowledge there was no television of course he knew before television came he knew that television will come and there was no internet social media to take the message everywhere in all the world but he knew because he is the one that is the fulfillment and the fullness of revelation and he said this gospel the same gospel he brought the same gospel he preached the same gospel he affirmed and he said this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations remember this is prophecy and remember it is coming from no one but Christ and he said the gospel will be proclaimed will be preached in all unto all nations and then shall the end come I believe that this is the time for evangelistic exploits and for power evangelism Romans chapter 10 reading from verse 17 it says so then faith cometh by hearing faith we need faith to be saved it comes by hearing we need faith to be delivered and healed it comes by hearing we need faith the grace of god coming and they will receive through faith the salvation of the lord faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the words of god in verse 18 verse 18 but i say have they not heard yes verily truly certainly their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world if at that time no radio no television no internet no social media the words of salvation their word went into the ends of the earth how about today when the possibilities are greater than it had ever it had ever been in the world aeroplane there today cars there today social media here to all the gadgets that can take us and 
take the word into all the world everything is here today if they did what they did at that time and he spread the faith and he preached the faith and many people came to know the lord and their words and their messages went unto the ends of the world how about today something explosive is about to happen Amen. through you through me and through us together the lord will expand of the limits the limits we have set for ourselves and the limits other people have set for us and the limits that the world themselves they have said they say don't come here the religion of this place is not Christianity, so don't come don't come here because here we don't recognize christ jesus we recognize they mentioned the national personality but in spite of that and despite that the prophecy of christ in our time will be fulfilled in jesus name expanding limits of evangelistic exploits and power evangelism three things we're looking at number one the prediction and prophecy of greater expansion till the end the prediction and the prophecy by prophets, by apostles, by Christ himself, our Lord and Savior, the prediction and prophecy of greater expansion till the end. Number two, the prayer and power for greater exploits in evangelism. Now, you see that prayer following after the prophecy and the prediction you see that power following after the prediction and the prophecy when we pray we should pray according to the prediction according to the prophecy and we should say like um, david lord this is what you have said do as you have said like paul the apostle i believe that it will be even as it was told me we hang our prayer and we hook our prayer to the prediction and the prophecy he said the gospel will be preached in all the world in all nations and when we come to pray we pray according to that revelation the prayer and the power for greater exploits in evangelism number three the prize you know anything we do any profit we make and any progression we have, there is always a price to pay. If somebody does not want to pay the price, all the possibilities are there and all the prophecy is there and the call to proclaim the gospel, everything is there, but we kind of fold our hand. God is great. God will do it and God will fulfill his word. He fulfills his word by the people who rise up and they say God said this will happen. We believe that this will happen and so we're willing to pay the price, the price of proclamation and the price of uh, having penetration in every nation we're willing to pay the price number three the price of proclamation were greater efforts after empowerment we're looking at number one here number one is the prediction of the prophecy of greater expansion till the end till the end in luke chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 47 and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations at that time the gospel had been pronounced and proclaimed in israel in judah in uh, jerusalem among just those people but now the prediction the prophecy is that this same word that the jerusalem people have heard and the apostles were going to start in jerusalem it will be preached in his name among all nations look at romans chapter 16 reading from verse 25 it says now to him that is of power to establish you according to my 
gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began verse 26 it says but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting god made known to all nations made known to all nations for the obedience of faith when the gospel is proclaimed in all the nations is so that everyone will say that's me that's for me christ died for me and the mystery the people have not heard all these many centuries and millennia and now we're hearing and belongs to us they have the obedience of Faith. We're looking at three things here. Number one is the worsening condition of the world. Number two is the widening consecration of his workmen. And number three is the wonderful confirmation of his word. As we look at the predictions, as we look at the prophecy, the prophecy is on both sides. On this side, there's the worsening condition of the world. On this side, there is the widening consecration of his workmen. And then to crown it up, there is the wonderful confirmation of his word. Look at number one there. Number one, the worsening condition of the world. The Lord has told us ahead of time. So you know, don't say well things are bad things are terrible and the condition the corruption of the world nobody can imagine that this will be no there's no imagination christ already said it but then he said in the midst of that corruption in the midst of that worsening condition we will still preach the word look at matthew chapter 24 verse 11 and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many in spite of that will rise up and will preach the gospel look at verse 12 in verse 12 and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold in spite each of that the prophecy and the prediction is still that even though we know that iniquity shall abound and the love of many waxing cold yet this is what we're called to look at verse 13 in verse 13 but he that shall endure unto them praise the lord corruption or no corruption there are people that will endure unto the end and i've decided i'll be one of them what have you decided? Corruption in the world, worsening conditions in the world, and yet Jesus said, everybody will not bow to the idol. Everybody will not be sucked up by the world. Everybody will not be drowned in the uh, sea of corruption in the world. It says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, this gospel, this good news, this glad tidings of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come we're looking at second timothy chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 1 the worsening condition of the world and it is this world we're called to that were to preach and proclaim the gospel and not look at the condition let's look at the captain of our salvation and the one who has predicted and proclaimed and prophesied that this is what we will do in second timothy chapter 3 verse 1 this know also that in the last days very lost time shall come look at verse 2 it says for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous boasters proud blasphemous disobedient to parents unthankful unholy and then in verse 3 it says in verse 3 without natural affection it, we're not even talking about spiritual affection here 
we're not talking about consecration here we're not talking about uh, you know uh, the, the supernatural that comes from heaven the kind of affection even the natural affection mothers to children parents to children natural affection the relationships that we have it says even that will almost vanish and the affection will collapse in society without natural affection truth breakers false accusers incontinent fears despisers of those that are good look at verse 4 in verse 4 it says they are the traitors and they are heady they are high-minded they are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of god oh you see those people they are pagans they are not church people look at verse 5 in verse 5 having a form of godliness church people religious people those people in course that say they're christians and yet they have a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away look at uh, verse 13 there in verse 13 but evil men and seducer shall walk wise shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived what do i do when people who are sinful are more and more sinful when people who are rebellious against the standard of the word of god they increase on every ground everywhere when people who have their their mind all seized and they're all uh, kind of captured by the devil and they demonstrate that everywhere and in every nation and it says evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived what do i do to save my head what do i do to preserve what i have what do i do and uh, most people will think the world is getting worse and worse the thing for me is if i want to make it when christ comes let me go and lock up myself somewhere i will not see evil i will not hear evil i'll not be influenced by evil it is not the lock door that keeps you from evil it is the grace of god that keeps you from evil it is not hiding somewhere hibernating somewhere because you know the world is terrible and they're going from bad to worse from worse to the worst and uh, you know if i want to make the rapture i i think i know what to do i don't go in the street i don't ride in their bus i don't take their train i hide myself somewhere and i'm you know in constant devotion and i'm in constant prayer so that i will not see evil well the bible doesn't say that look at the next verse the next verse says but continue thou in evangelism continue thou the thing is getting worse and worse in the power of the lord in the spirit of the lord continue thou are you a preacher continue thou are you an evangelist continue thou are you a committed christian to the lord when the conditions are getting worse and worse no fear in your heart no timidity in your life he has not given you the spirit of fear but the spirit of power and the spirit of a sound mind and the spirit of love and instead and all those who don't allow evil men waxing worse and worse to take the stage to take the control and to take the whole world to themselves are they courageous to do evil i'll be courageous to do good are they courageous to exalt satan and sin i will be courageous to exalt the savior and i'll be courageous to say christ is the only way and the only savior and you don't allow those people that are waxing worse and worse in their evil to shut you up to clamp you down and then to make you hide somewhere in the room it says but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou has learned them we'll come to number two here number two we're looking at the widening consecration of his workmen where well, his workmen and when the people of the world when they think they can have more authority on us 
than Christ our Savior, Christ our Commander, and Christ the Captain of our salvation. When they think that they can produce evil so that our mind will be tuned to them, and then they will think whatever the world does not allow us to do, we cannot do. We're going to prove them liars. Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 28, saying, Did we not safely command you? Don't you know the authority in Jerusalem? Don't you know the authority in the land of Israel? Don't you know anything we say will not be done in Jerusalem will not be done? Where are you coming from? Don't you know? Don't you understand? We are the final authority in the land. No, I didn't know that. I thought God is the final authority. I thought Christ is the final authority. I thought the earth is the Lord's and the people that dwell therein. That's what is in your Psalms. I thought God is the most high. I didn't know that the Pharisees were the most high. I didn't know the Sadducees were the most high. I didn't know that the religious peddlers are the most high. What I knew is that God the king of heaven and the king of earth that's the one i knew that is the final authority so they said did we not stately command you that ye should not teach in this name behold ye have filled jerusalem with your doctrine understand the doctrine of christ that christ is the only way the only way to salvation that tradition does not save that all those ceremonial laws in the old testament which the pharisees were embracing and they had married without any divorce to the uh, ceremonial laws it's like that's their baby that's their wife that's their spouse and they're protecting that ceremonial law don't you know that this is this and they said no all that is abolished christ and christ alone is the savior and then you have filled yourself with this doctrine that christ is the only savior intending to bring this man's blood upon us now if you're feeling guilty why don't you go to christ who remove the guilt you are the one that said let his blood be upon us and our children so why are you complaining now that the preaching of christ makes the people who are preachers uh, to have uh, this man's the messiah's blood upon us if you're feeling convicted <laughs> don't argue if you're feeling guilty don't argue if you're feeling guilty don't say it's peter or the preachers that brought the man's blood on you go to calvary is still available whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved now let's look at the response of uh, the apostles verse 29 in verse 29 then peter and the other apostles answered hold on peter peter where are you coming from peter was the one that denied uh -uh, i don't know him but power came upon him new courage new authority a new power power will come upon your life in that same place where you were so timid and so fearful and you denied i'm not there i'm not one of them today if you have not got it yet, if you didn't get it on Friday, if you didn't get it on Monday, today, power. Amen. That power will come upon you. You know, Peter, if anybody had said that 50, 60 days before this time, he looked down and say, I'm sorry. They're sorry for preaching the truth. I'm sorry. They're sorry for feeling Jerusalem with their doctrine. I, I didn't remember. I now know that you are there. And I know how powerful you are. I will never say sorry to the devil. 
all those messengers of the devil that wants to continue in the tradition that cannot save any soul i'll never say sorry to a messenger of the devil i wanted you to say that for yourself and so peter peter no cowardice peter no powerlessness now peter no regrets then peter and the other apostles answered and said we ought to be god rather than men look at verse 30 in verse 30 the god of our fathers peter what are you doing i am preaching What's, where are your where are your people audience look at the pharisees there look at the sadducees there where are the people you want them to hear the same doctrine they accused you that you feel jerusalem with where are the people you want to tell again so that if they have not got it firsthand it will come to them you see the pharisees and the sadducees and the men of authority and the men of tradition the god of our fathers raised up jesus whom ye slew you know what he said you are bringing the blood of this man upon us he said did they tell you that did somebody uh, kind of gossiped and told you this is what we're preaching okay above gossip above people coming to tell you privately they're feeling jerusalem with the doctrine and they are bringing the blood of the messiah upon you he said i'll tell you directly this is what we we'll preach there and this is what you're accusing us of he says whom ye slew and hanged on a tree then in verse 31 it says him as god exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior and for to give repentance to israel israel the covenant nation cannot even be saved without repentance israel the religious people cannot even know god without repentance it says to give repentance to israel and forgiveness of sins look at verse 32 in verse 32 it tells us and he says and we are his witnesses we're not ashamed we're not afraid you're looking for his witnesses you want to capture them you want to imprison them you want to incarcerate them we are the people feeling jerusalem with the doctrine of christ we are the people and saying that there's no other name by which anyone can be saved except the name of jesus that irritates you that offends you and you're saying who is saying that who is saying that we are the people if you want to persecute here we are we are his witnesses of these things and so also is the holy ghost whom god has given to them that obey him i pray that this kind of courage will come to everyone here Amen. power power evangelism coming to anyone everyone here in jesus name Amen. now what those just the apostles alone that had that kind of conviction that kind of courage that kind of consecration look at chapter 8 verse 3 and verse 4 in chapter 8 for as for saul he made havoc of the church entering into every house can you see the zeal of the persecutor and if this man without grace this man without faith at that time can so strategize in wanting to destroy christianity and wanting to destroy the people that have faith in christ if he strategized and he had the addresses of all those people in his hand and he entered without permission if he had that boldness if he had that courage to enter every house healing men and women committed them to prison if the unbelievers have courage what am i doing what cowardice if the unbelievers have strategy and they go to every house what am i doing clueless 
not having any strategy if they enter every house and they preach the word and they preach their error i think i should get higher than they have gone don't you think with grace i should be higher than those who have no grace with faith i should be greater higher than those who have no faith with the prophecy with the prediction and with the power i should go further than the people that are just walking on their brain without having the prediction or the prophecy he entered every house look at verse 4 so you can do that for satan turn around and watch us and see what we can do for the savior therefore 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 because of the havoc of Saul because of the unprecedented persecution of Paul of Saul going to every house therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere what were they doing leaking their wounds I left my house persecution I'm suffering persecution crying persecution look at this wicked man and then they start praying you know some people they say lord i need peace anybody disturbing my peace let him die i need joy i need stability i can't stay in my home i can't stay where the house i built up here am I, and there is one man called Saul there, and he drew me out. Here I am. God, don't you see I'm suffering? Okay, if you recognize I'm suffering, kill that man. Uh -uh. When you pray like that, how are you praying that God will kill the person already? write the epistle to the romans he'll write the epistle to the first corinthians second corinthians he'll write the epistle to the galatians he'll write the Ephesians to the uh, Colossians, he'll write the epistle to the Thessalonians 1 and 2, he'll write 1 Timothy 1 and 2, he'll write Titus, and it will reveal the unsearchable mystery of the kingdom of God. And the Christians are busy praying, kill him, kill him, let him die, let them die. They will not die. God will convert them. God will turn them around and the power of God will so take hold of them they'll do what they need to do but meanwhile they that were scattered abroad they were not crying they were not weeping they were not regretting how did I become a Christian they went everywhere preaching the word I pray it will happen again widening consecration of his workmen number three here number three the wonderful confirmation of his word in mark chapter 16 reading from verse 15 and he said unto them go ye into all the world go ye into all the world please always read your Bible arrived. When he sent them earlier, he said, Go not in the way of the Gentiles. Go only to the tribes of Israel. Now, if you hold on to that, that's what we heard many years ago when he gave us instruction and he sent them two by two. And they want to witness and to give the word to only those people now. He's giving them something higher than he gave them before. I'm asking you, when your denomination started, what was the limit of your outreach? This tribe, this language people. After 20 years, what has God told you? nothing else and so we're still in that local territory now expanding ministry expanding outreach it says now unto them to those same people <clears throat> he had given the original commandment commission to now it says go ye into all the world and preach the 
the gospel to every creature. Uh, you understand that uh, knowledge sometimes varies from year to year. If you go to the same primary school you went to when you were at the primary school level, the curriculum has changed. If you go to the same secondary school you attended, curriculum has changed. If you go to the same university you, you attended about 20 years ago, 30 years ago, go there again, that same department, curriculum has changed. The curriculum of the gospel has not changed. The demand of Christ has not changed because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God said, I am God and change not. And his word and the message that will get us out of sin and bring us to the Savior, it has not changed. It says, preach the gospel, the same gospel to every creature. Look at verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. There are people that are so tender-hearted and they think they are more tender-hearted than God. They say, I cannot bring myself to believe that the God of love will bring judgment and somebody will go into damnation forever and ever. They say, I cannot think of that puny man, poor man. You think whatever you cannot think of, God cannot think of. His thoughts are not your thoughts. His ways are not your ways. And there are people that say eventually everybody will be saved. We don't need to all this exertion and going here, going there and preaching to them. God is love. God is also holy. God is also a judge. And God is also a consuming fire. Why do you dwell on only one of the characteristics of God? You see when those angels, when they appeared, and when Uzziah was dead, and then he, the, 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 the began to hear about God. Those angels that came from heaven, they didn't say, Lord, I love, love, love. They didn't say, um, you know, goodness, goodness, goodness. You know what they said? Holy, holy, holy. So, they don't you build the whole theology on God is love. God is holy. God is judge. And God will judge sin. And so, he that believeth not shall be damned. In verse 17, verse 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe. Are you a believer? Any believer in the house? Amen. Amen. This is what will follow you. I said this is what will follow you. Amen. And you know, if it's already following you, like your shadow following you, you can't kneel down there on the street, on the road, and say, God, God, help my shadow. Follow me. You didn't look at the shadow. Every time the sun shines and you come out, if you stay in your room, no shadow will follow you. But when you come out where the sun is shining and you're walking and you're moving and you're acting, your shadow will follow you. The same thing. When you come out of the room, when you come out of the closet, and you come and you're walking in the way that the Lord had ordained, and you're preaching the gospel, and you're touching lives, everywhere you go, like your shadow follows you, signs and wonders will follow you. Amen. If you go to where the sick are, signs and wonders will follow you. But if you never go to the place where the, you know, the sick people are, the demonized people where they are, if you only go to your church of those uh, 53 people, and there have been 50, 52, uh, swinging between 50 and 60 for 10 years, the same people, they are washed and washed and washed all over again. They are healthy, they are sound, there's no demon possession there. 
there is, uh, you know, challenge there, except the normal challenge. My wife did not talk to me this morning. Okay, that's the challenge you have. And my husband did not look at my face last night. That's all the challenge you have. Science will not follow. But when you leave that place of 52, 53 people, you don't abandon them. You still come back to them. And you have an assistant that is giving them everything you've been giving them. And then you go to the places where the sick people are and the demonized people are and you're a believer. Am I talking to believers? Are they here? Are they up there? The signs must follow you. The wonders must follow you. Because these signs shall follow them that believe. You know, some people, they're too deep in theology. And they say, when the last apostle died, miracles vanished. Healing vanished. Uh, uh, do you see all those 12 apostles? Have you seen that they're all gone? Yes, I see they're all gone. Uh -huh. What do you expect they'll be healing? Because he didn't say these signs shall follow the apostles. He said these signs shall follow who? Tell me now. Preach to me. Them that believe. Do I believe? Do you believe? Do we believe? Yes. You see signs you have never seen. Yes. In my name, not in their office. Not in their original authority. Not in their feeling in themselves. Not in their title. It's not the title of the apostle of the prophet, of the evangelist, of the pastor, of the teacher, is not the title. It's the name. And the name is still as mighty, as powerful today as ever. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, they shall take off serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. You know, some people say, you know why I gauge and I think of where I go and I plan very well. I don't want anybody to hurt me with what they give me to eat. You didn't know the scriptures. It say, if they drink any deadly thing accidentally you know I, i'm not used to this kind of food and this kind of tea and this kind of uh, you know what concoction did they put there don't ask any question eat i said eat that thing that will hurt unbelievers will heal you because if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. What will happen? <laughs> you know, I'm afraid to pray for sick people and to lay hands on them. What if I lay hands on them and they die? Where did you get that? Who prophesied that to you that when you lay hands on people, they will die? My hands will not kill anybody. Amen. Your hands will not kill anybody. Amen. Anointed hands. My hands are anointed. My mouth anointed. My personality anointed. Look, look at my, look at, you know, my fellow minister. He was walking there in Acts chapter 5. And his shadow was healing, not hurting. His presence was healing, not hurting. Even without preaching, just passing by, a shadow was healing the sick. And the Lord did not promise him that. Look, he went beyond the promise. 
if you stay with the promise, at least, what are those anointed hands? What are they? The Lord anoint your hand. And the sick will recover in Jesus' name. Is it only the hands of the men? I said, is it only the hands of the men? Sister, we have a sick person there. Come. Can you lay your hands on her so she'll be healed? Pastor, number one, I'm not a man. Number two, I'm not a worker. Number three, I never did this before. Whatever you've not done before, it's one day you'll start doing it, and today is your day. Amen. You had uh, one of our leaders so moderated the other day, and was talking about Bagada. You may not understand, Bagada is the location where we have our headquarters church. And we normally would have, uh, you know, Thursday revival, evangelism, healing, you know, service. That's where we have, we connect with power. And there was this uh, papa, you know, an old man, he was paralyzed. And he was um, brought in a taxi to the, um, to Bagada on a Thursday. And we were already inside singing crosses, getting ready for the ministration of the word. And the taxi stopped in front of the, um, in front of the church building. And so the ushers that were there, they were ladies, they were sisters. And so the person who brought the paralyzed old man came down and said, um, please, uh, sister, uh, come help me so that we can take the man out of the taxi and then we can, you know, get him to the church. And when the pastor begins to pray now, the word did not say, these signs shall follow the pastor only. He will follow you too. And so the sister said, all right, I understand. Please step aside. And the sister said, sir, come down. The fellow said, I told you, we brought him. He cannot walk. He cannot stand. He cannot do anything. The sister said, please go aside. And the sister faced the man and said, sir, please come down. This fellow still came and said, please. Why are you wasting time? The pastor may start praying soon and he will miss his miracle. And the sister said, please give me a chance, stay aside. And the sister said, sir, come down. And the man, paralyzed, came down. Stood up. And then began to walk and came to the church with the miracle, not for the miracle there's a difference i come for miracle you have not got it yet but i came with my miracle and you're going with power a man a woman these signs shall follow them that believe from today the signs will follow you uh, look at verse 19 verse 19 so then after the lord had spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of god verse 20 in verse 20 and he went forth he told them go and he went forth and preached everywhere the lord walking with them as you go, the Lord will walk with you. Amen. Confirming the word. Not confirming the man. It's not the man. It's not the woman. Confirming the word. If you say the same word that the Lord had given to his own apostles and disciples and to everyone, he confirmed. 
the apostleship is not confirming the gift is not confirming anything his own word is greater than your title his own word is greater than anything you lay claim to and what god confirms whether it's coming out of the mouth of a man the mouth of a woman he confirms the word was signs following and at the end there there's a word there it says amen amen in your life amen in your ministry we're coming to point number two point number two we're looking at the prayer and the power for greater exploits in evangelism in three points we're looking at here number one we're looking at greater faith for greater exploits in uh, evangelism. Number two is greater focus with greater expense for evangelism. Number three is greater fervency with greater exertion. Always evangelizing. Look at number one. Number one, greater faith for greater exploits in uh, evangelism greater faith greater faith greater faith in mark chapter 11 verse 22 mark 11 verse 22 and jesus answering says unto them have faith in god it's never tired have faith in god it's never weary have faith in God. He never fails. He never falters. Have faith in God. It's a covenant keeping God. Have faith in God. The days of rain and the days of heat do not change him. Have faith in God. He doesn't favor Nigeria above Zambia. Have faith in in god he doesn't look at the stature of a man or the presentation of a woman and he says that's a man and that is a woman no he doesn't discriminate there's no partiality with him have faith in god he doesn't look at your name your name is uh, stephen his name is joseph, uh, joseph her name is mary her name is mariam he doesn't look at the name God is the one that looks at everyone that accepts the word and believes the word. Have faith in God. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, for verily I say unto you that whosoever, man, woman, whosoever, young, old, whosoever, experienced or inexperienced, whosoever is doing this for the first time, is doing this for the 99th time, whosoever Whosoever he is new in this uh, dynamic ministry or is old in this evangelistic ministry, whosoever shall say to this mountain, hold on, you know, all these uh, people were talking about apostles, how many years did they spend with Christ? Three years three and a half years, four years, and then they began to do the exploits. Three years. And they already began to do exploits because whosoever shall say to this mountain, how many years have I spent now in Christ? Have I spent 10 years and am I still crawling? And am I still behind the people that spent only three and a half years? How many years have I spent and I've been saved or, and sanctified and filled and baptized with the Holy Ghost, and I, you know, I did. I cannot go where they went. I cannot have what they had. Why? When Jesus said, whether you are young or old, whether you just came in or you have been in for a long time, whosoever, that whosoever is me. Amen. I said that whosoever is me. I can just begin to picture myself now. I became born again and I was going to a good gospel, evangelical, 
Pentecostal church. It was good. The music wonderful. Their preaching wonderful. I can still imagine in my, you know, as saw my preachers, the ones I got saved under, and the ones that developed me, helped me later, I can still see them preaching the word, and I'll be wondering, how did this man get all this in the Bible? And I will pray and pray. I wasn't praying to be like him. I was just praying God keep on strengthening them. But you know what? They're now gone. They have become old and they have gone. And in the church, you know, they gave the members chance to stand up and give testimony. All they wanted us to do is to say, I was a sinner. I came to Christ. I'm born again. And now I have new life. That's all. It wouldn't take you one minute or two minutes. And they wanted us to tell other people who are there, who are not been saved, that they can be saved. Those years three years in the church, four years, and five years in the church, and every Sunday evening, they give chance for people to stand up and say, I am born again. For five years, I could not. I will sit down there, and if the pastor looked my direction to signify all these years, why don't you stand up? I'll dodge. Because I didn't know I was part of the whosoever. One day, as I've been praying, 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 saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, I challenged myself. I say, why are you doing all the time? And why do you dog? And you know, people cannot hear the word from you on the street. I couldn't talk to anybody, but I had a little group of students in the scripture union. I could talk to those one because they were in my mathematics class. And since I taught them mathematics, I thought I can as well teach them the scripture. Apart from that, I could not talk to anybody. But one day, I just realized, what's happening to you? Do you know your name? I said, of course I do. What's your name? What's happening to you? Do you know your name? I said, of course I do. What's your name? I said, William. What does William mean? Somebody went into the dictionary of names and he said, defender of the faith. And the defender of the faith, mute, could not say anything. But one day, I said, all the fear no more. I talked to myself. I said, all the cowardice, no more. I said, the whosoever, after all, William begins with a W. Whosoever begins with a W. Don't you know your name is there? I said, yes, sir. I now know my name is there. And then I got up. I went out. And I started talking to people and I saw somebody that was paralyzed and the mother was dancing around a pot turned upside down and then the Lord reminded me whosoever and that you are the whosoever this day no other preacher there no other personal evangelist there and i asked the woman i said what are you doing she said i'm worshiping my god i said this is your god a porch turned upside down he said yes i said okay see what your god has done to your child paralyzed six years of age had never moved i said i will pray to my god you will make your child rise up Remember, I didn't have all that boldness before, but now I am the whosoever. Amen. Who is the whosoever today? Amen. The Lord confirmed that from heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I said, take up that pot, smash it on the ground, destroy it. He said, watch. I said, I will pray for your child. Your child will get up. She said, Pray for my child first, and then I will break the pot. What if I break the pot and my child does not rise up? And then I've lost on both sides. I said, Madam, I'm a teacher. 
And when we teach in school, the students don't determine the curriculum I teach. I determine the curriculum I teach. And so she took the pot, and the pot was empty. There was nothing but an empty gourd. Smashed it on the ground. And then I turned to the boy. I didn't even touch the boy. I said, boy, and by the way, I didn't need to understand their language. There was no interpreter. It was not a crusade. I was speaking English and the boy did not understand the English but I still, because it's not the boy that will confirm the word. He doesn't need to understand. It's God that will confirm the word and God understands English perfectly well. And so I said, boy, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the boy looked here and there, and he stood up like I'm standing up. And he began to walk what he had never done before. Why did God do that? Not because of me, who am I? Because whosoever you you whosoever shall say to this mountain be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart it says but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass he will have i will have you will have whatsoever you say. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at greater focus with greater expense for evangelism uh, you know if you're going to do anything and i know you will i said you will there must be focus when i was in the primary school they taught us all these many subjects this name that name arithmetic and geography and history and you know whatever uh, there was no narrowing down then we go to secondary school they added more in the junior secondary school we study this and study this and even things we're not going to need things we're not going to use we have to study everything then we go to the university in the first year uh, they narrowed it down now but you still have to do this and do this and do that and then in the final year the year of specialization we narrowed it down to just this one subject and we focused on that it is that focus that makes an expert it is that focus that makes a professional when in our lives, in our calling, and we have been, you know, here and there, learning this and learning that, and we have been kind of uh, pressured with quite a lot of subjects. But now that you know that this is your calling, and this is the gift that will match that calling, you focus the focus of faith the focus of uh, passion that you center everything you've got on this and you're willing to spend spend the midnight oil spend time on your knees praying spend examining and exploring the promises of god and the prophecies of the word and you have this expense greater than all the expense you had before i might have just to i might just tell you when i studied mathematics i had maximum concentration not just consecration concentration and 
I delved into it and I studied it and this was my poorest subject when I was in the earlier in the earlier secondary school that the teachers wondered what I was doing in school but the time came somebody called me a mathematician that word woke me up and now I concentrated on that and when I got to university I'm telling you that I rose with mass, I, you know, slept with mass, I dreamt of mass, everything was mathematics. And now God called me to be a minister. And I asked myself now, in the world of science, in the world of mathematics, I had focus, I had concentration, and I now took all the time that I used to use on mass and some other preoccupations. I gathered the time together, and now morning is with the Bible, afternoon is with the Bible, evening is with the Bible. I dream, I can tell you, I can tell you, I dream of preaching. I in my dream I preach in my dream I pray for the sick because I so concentrate on this ministry that this is what you do that my waking hours my sleeping hours everything is influenced by the prophecies and the promises and the predictions because of focus you know if you focus on anything you will achieve that thing Criminals focus on crime. Athletes focus on athletics. And the drivers, professional drivers, they focus on driving. The construction workers, they focus on construction. And the people who are doing research and they want to find, uh, you know, the vaccine that will work for this, work for that, their mind, their brain, everything is focused. Why is it the, evangel the evangelists are not focusing? If you come and you focus on this one thing that the Lord has called you to do, you will succeed beyond expectation. Amen. Look at Nehemiah chapter 6 and I'm reading from verse 3. And I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work. I am doing a great work. Nehemiah said, he came from the king's palace. And now he came to his people. He looked at all the rubbles. He looked at everything is going to repair and reform and rebuild. And now in this great work, somebody called him. Somebody is calling you. Come and discuss. Somebody is calling you. They want to get the word from you. Are you rebelling against the king or whatever? He said, I'm sorry. I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down to you. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down unto you? Look at verse 4. In verse 4, yet they sent unto him four times. Leave the work. You're too, uh, you're too uh, kind of concentrated diverse everything you know, and make sure you scatter your energy a little a man of only one business one trade only salvation only wanting people to be saved and this single work they came to him four times over and they said come come away come out relax you need you know they tell us that you know you need some air you need some breathing you need some relaxation otherwise you'll destroy yourself he says if i die on the job the lord had called me to that the best way to die and so they sent four times unto him after the same manner and i answered them after the same manner i am doing a great work are you doing a great work saving souls is that not a great work 
living, making people to go from earth and get to heaven? Is that not a great work? Turning their hearts and their minds unto the Lord, the Creator, is that not a great work? Healing the sick that, you know, the help they've got in the world could not give them the healing, is that not a great work? And bringing impossibilities to become possible in the lives of people that you are ministering to, is that not a great work? And doing a work that will outlive you, a work that you do today, and it will be on and on and on, even after you have left, is that not a great work? Why don't you then focus? Why don't you then concentrate and say, I am doing a great work so I cannot come down unto you we're looking at romans chapter 1 reading from verse 14 i am a debtor both to the greeks and to the barbarians both to the wise and to the unwise then in verse 15 it says so as much as in me is as long as i am breathing as long i am still alive as long as i have uh, this passion this power this go-getting uh, attitude within me as long as i have my intelligence and everything uh, the lord has given me to succeed as long as in me lies i am ready to preach the gospel to you that are true also and then in verse 16 say for i'm not a ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. All they have to do is to believe. They will not believe without a preacher. Therefore, I have to get to them and speak the word to them, the word of faith, the word of grace, and the word of salvation. I need to speak that to them so that they can believe. Because everyone that believeth to the Jew force and also to the Greek, I pray that that same purposefulness and that same passion the Lord will give us in Jesus name I'm coming to number three here number three the greater fervency the greater fervency with greater exertion always evangelizing always evangelizing i told you that you know i i couldn't evangelize you know in my earlier years i was uh, you know like closed up the shyness the cowardice the fear and even when i started talking to people i wasn't looking at their faces i would look down and say in matthew chapter 1 verse 21 he said, Thou shalt bring forth his son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. When I didn't look at them, I retained my boldness. I retained my ability to read that scripture, and even to quote without reading. But if I continue like that, I couldn't look at the faces of people. I couldn't challenge them. And I not just I couldn't point. Thou art the man. My hands were down. My head was down. It was not because my hair could not be up. Something the engine inside was not pumping courage to the head. But one day, your own day has come. You will not always be like you have been. A change will come. And when eventually, even when I began to look up, I'll stay. If you've seen me preach those years, I'll stay like this. I can stand still like that and say everything I need to say. Once in a while, I look that way, but my hands never moved. Then I can look that way and my hands never move. I, I didn't exert energy. Fervency, not me, but now. I said, but now. Do I move my hands? Do I walk around? Do I point at people? Fervency, fire has come. 
and that fire that fervency will come upon you in jesus name in romans chapter 12 romans chapter 12 verse 11 not slothful in business Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Fervent in spirit, the power to be fervent, the passion to be fervent, and the purpose to be fervent coming upon your life in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 26, and I'm reading here from verse 19. It says, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. When God gives you an heavenly vision, you will run with that heavenly vision. When God gives you an heavenly vision, you will soar above with that heavenly vision in Jesus' name. Vision, vision, vision. It's not something we can cut. It's not something we produce. It's not something you know, we imagine. It comes from heaven. That's why it's a heavenly vision. And then we run with it. We're not disobedient to the heavenly vision. You cannot be here Friday and Monday and Tuesday today and hear my story of when I was weak, when he made me strong, and then at my age, I'm still you run in you cannot hear all this and not have a vision god has given you a vision and that vision will produce will activate something dead something dormant from your life in your heart in jesus name every man here will do something you have never done every woman here will do something you have never done and the spirit of god will not begin to move you and what you do is that you become obedient to the heavenly vision in verse 24 verse 24 as he thus speak for himself Festus said with a loud voice paul thou art beside thyself much learning doth make thee mad for a person who is, you know, sedated, a person who is laid back, a person who is just sitting down, a person who is inactive, a person who was dormant. Paul looked like a madman. Because it's running here, running there, pointing there, pointing there. It's finishing this and going to another one. Paul, thou art beside thyself. True, true. There's another spirit that came to Paul and beside himself. That spirit now moved him and directed him. That spirit will come upon you. Like something, it will come upon you. It will activate everything that is dead and dormant in your life in Jesus' name. Thou art beside thyself. Much learning. Now, they didn't see him in his study. They didn't know he was learning anything. They didn't see him burning the midnight oil and studying. But you recognize study by what comes out of the student he was a student of the bible a student of scripture a student of the history of god's people a student of the prophecies and the covenant the lord has made you didn't see him when he was studying but when he came and now he spoke to the people they knew this man at much learning you know will not see you while you are burning the midnight oil will not see you while you're learning and learning it's when you come out but if you keep on learning you never come out nobody will see anything you don't come out they'll see that there is much learning and that much learning makes you to act out of yourself and to the people who have a negative uh, kind of interpretation they'll say you are mad they'll say you are mad uh, what would how do you say mad person a mad person is a person acting by another spirit that is moving him 
that is this is beyond his human spirit this is beyond his normal spirit there's another spirit coming from somewhere else that gets into him and makes him do something superhuman that's the people they call man he takes an iron bar and he breaks it that's not human that is a superhuman human ability and then he runs he runs like nobody else can run and he's not an athlete he's not the human spirit he's another spirit that came upon him and people try to hold him down one man here one man there and they try to keep him down and he does like this and they fall to the ground they say this is not human spirit this is super human and they bind him with chain and they say so that it will not move and it's not thread it's chain it breaks everything that's not human that's why this Festus said Paul what I see here this is not your human spirit and this is not your earthly spirit this is another spirit but the man did not know where that spirit came from that's why he said you are mad when they look at us the way we talk and the way we act and the places we go and the things we do and they know that this is not human spirit this is yeah, superhuman they might say you are mad are you offended I said are you offended they say you are doing what you cannot do by yourself not offended they say you're doing what we who have human spirits cannot do you should not be offended they are affirming there's a spirit coming from on high that came upon you and for their judgment you are mad that's all the vocabulary they have in verse 25 in verse 25 and what he said i am not mad the way you are thinking of madness i am not mad he says most noble festers but i speak forth the words of truth and of soberness in verse 26 in verse 26 they said for the king knoweth of these things before whom also i speak freely for i am persuaded that thee that none of these things are hidden from him for this thing was not done in a corner look at the next verse there in verse 27 king agrippa believest thou now this superhuman spirit this was the this king that came to ask him whether we'll put him in prison or we'll send him to caesar this king that you know they, they were hearing him they expected him to defend himself so that he will not go to prison and look at the man he turned to king agrippa and said believest thou the prophets uh, it is how people with another spirit this is how they behave he didn't allow the king to answer he said i know i know i know that thou believest how can you shake off a man like this look at verse 28 and then agrippa said unto paul almost thou persuadest me to be a christian the king who came to examine him who came to see whether they should put him in prison or send him to caesar to give a greater judgment this king now said paul almost that persuades me to be a christian verse 29 it says and paul said i would to god that not only thou but also all that hear me this day were both almost and all together such as i am except these bonds these the people who went before us this is the kind of fervency they had this is the kind of focus they had and this is the kind of power that came out uh, through them and we are the people now paul is no more there but you are there Stephen is no more there, but you are there. Peter, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Peter is no more here, but the lame people are still here. The sick people are still here. The unsafe people are still here. You are the one next on the line. 
you will do it paul didn't know he will do anything like this but he did i didn't know i could do anything like this but thank god for his grace that same grace is available for you Amen. you will turn thousands to the lord Amen. you will turn millions to the lord Amen. your word will be a word of power over the people you are sent to minister to in Jesus name Amen. number three here number three is the price of proclamation with greater efforts after empowerment after empowerment Acts chapter 1 we're looking at verse 8 in Acts chapter 1 reading from verse 8 but she shall receive power we say amen to that one ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth i want you to look at those places ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem that's why they were so fearful they locked up themselves because of the jews and he said where well, you were fearful before and you locked up yourself and you will not even come out and you're peeping through the hole of your key of your door key are they still there or have they gone and you are in, you couldn't they couldn't even come out to go and take water to go and take anything they were so fearful in that same place where you were fearful before you will be his witness and then it says in all Judea these are the people that took Christ and they nailed him to the cross and Peter said if they can do that to him I fear for my life and he said I don't know him and then in Samaria those were the amalgamated people they have religion mixed religion a little bit of Abraham a little bit of tradition in that same place and then to the uttermost part of the earth Peter, the apostles were not well traveled. They have not been to those uttermost parts of the earth before. And Jesus said, The power you are going to receive will move you everywhere. And you will be effective, dynamic witnesses in Jesus' name. The price of proclamation with greater efforts after empowerment look at three things here number one the passion and the pursuit of his latter day army number two the price of participation by local and um, loyal ambassadors number three is performance our progress despite little adversities or adversaries look at number one number one we're looking at ezekiel chapter 37 and i'm reading from verse 10 so i prophesied as he commanded me that's what ezekiel said and these three days to the ministers workers professionals i have prophesied as he commanded me to you and to the people who are listening everywhere i've not said you know what i normally say i've not taught subjects i normally teach god gave this to me and said i should give it to you and without any shyness and without any timidity without any fear i prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and you are now living the thing that was dead in you before has come alive and they stood up you are going to stand up upon your feet an exceeding great army an exceeding great army and you are now part of that army the devotion of that army transferred to your heart the discipline development of that mighty army now you have and by the grace of god are you not many of you are, might be younger than i am you are your 40s i'm in my 80s you will run faster than i've run 
Many of you, you said, have lost a number of years. All that the pastor, the preacher is talking about now, I should have had this about 10 years ago, about 20 years ago. And then you pack all the lanes you should have gone, all the journey you should have made, and all the exertion you should have had. All these past 20 years, now that you wake up, you're going to wake up and cover more ground in Jesus' name. And those of us who have been going slowly and gradually, and now you say, I need to catch up with this man. I want you to think about this. Now, you see what God is helping me to do. I go here in my country, Nigeria. I go there in other countries in West Africa. I go to that other place, uh, you know, Central Africa. And now I come to Southern Africa and I'm thinking of people here. You know, Paul the Apostle, when he came up, Peter, John had been running and had been going and going and going. And when Paul came in, Paul said, I've been sleeping. Not only sleeping, I've been walking against my destiny and the destiny of other people. And now Paul rose up. He began to run. Look at him. He's caught up with Peter. Look at him. He's gone beyond Peter. Look at him. As we don't hear about Peter in chapter 12, chapter 13, Paul and Barnabas. Chapter 14 is Paul. Chapter 15, the conversion of the Gentiles. Chapter 15 is speaking Timothy, is still running. Chapter 17, they that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. Where is Peter? Maybe he has retired, but I see Paul overtaking Peter. Can I call on somebody there to come and overtake me? Can I call on somebody there to run? Just increase your speed a little bit. Just increase your passion a little bit. And keep on running. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. Because heaven will be supplying the unction, the anointing every day of your life in Jesus' name. And then you catch up with me. Am I saying something impossible? With God, all things are possible. And now, who knows? I might be 90. Who knows? I might be 100. I don't know. But who knows? But whether 90 or 100, you at 40, you at 30, you at 50, the Lord will prolong your life. Yeah. You were on you will not be tired you will walk and you will not faint and the places i've been dreaming if i add more years i'll get there if i add more years i'll get there but william don't worry the people are there they will get there you will get there passion power and you become part of the mighty army, an exceeding great army. We're looking at uh, number two now. Number two is the price of participation by loyal ambassadors. The price of penetration by loyal ambassadors. We're looking at second Corinthians chapter 5. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 18. And all things of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation, verse 19, to which that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, now then, we as 
ambassadors for Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ. You have now come. The Lord has raised you up. And it doesn't mean your, your title, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pro, uh, pastor, and teacher, but we're all ambassadors for Christ. And as God, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's head, standing in the place of Christ, be ye reconciled unto God. Everybody you meet now, any moment of the day, any day of the week, any day, week of the month, any month of the year, that's your message. You are going forth as ambassadors in the office, an ambassador on the street, an ambassador in the marketplace, an ambassador. You are traveling to another country. You are an ambassador. And when you go there, you are doing the work of the ambassador. We plead with you. In Christ said, be ye reconciled unto God. A friend who is not reconciled unto God, be an ambassador, be reconciled unto God. God, an acquaintance who is just meeting you and then you've been you know sharing together but you discover he doesn't have Christ she doesn't have Christ here is your ministry now and here is your doing everywhere you're telling them be ye reconciled unto God somebody is meeting and say I'm happy to meet you I've been hearing about you and now I hear I see you face to face you say thank you very much I appreciate our coming together. Do you know Christ? Be ye reconciled unto God. To the people near, to the people far, to the people that you relate with hand to hand or mouth to mouth. Be ye reconciled unto God. To the people you speak to over the phone, be ye reconciled unto God. And to the people you are able to reach with the social media, with television, radio, whatever, your message in the message of the ambassador. Be ye reconciled unto God. And through that message, and through that uh, mighty outpouring, and through that power, and through everything the Lord has called you to do, and you're doing, you're telling them, and you tell them with faith, and you tell them with persuasiveness, and you tell them with joy, and you tell them with confirmation, and you tell them with the demonstration of the power, and the presence of God in your life you're telling them be ye reconciled unto God and they be reconciled in Jesus name in Jesus name if this becomes your passion if, the, if this becomes your life not periodically but always all the time and everybody you come across you are telling them be reconciled be ye reconciled I am reconciled I'm a child of God and that's why all these good good things are coming through me to everybody and I call you to the same life pattern and to the same lifestyle that everywhere you go you have just one message to present be ye reconciled unto god your ministry will never be the same again look at number three here number three is the performance our progress despite little adversaries we're going to make progress pharaoh did not stop moses no Pharaoh will stop you. Nebuchadnezzar did not stop Daniel. Nobody will stop you. The Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Sanhedrin, they didn't stop Peter and James and John. Nobody will stop you. Simon the sorcerer in Philippi did not stop Philip and nobody will stop you. Look at that lady running after Peter. Sorry, running after Paul and Silas. These are the men that showed the way of salvation. And she did that many, many days, attracting attention to herself and to the people she served. But they didn't stop Paul. Nothing will stop you. I want you to look back and think about the things that have tried to stop your calling, your ministry, your destiny. I want you to look around. The things, whether they're tangible things or intangible. Poverty, pressure, 
whatever the things that have tried to stop you here we are today and in the future tomorrow next week next month next year for the rest of your life the older you get the stronger you will become you will be irresistible those little little adversaries adversities will not stop you i will not be stopped i will not be stopped and you will not stop yourself i said you will not stop yourself sometimes the thought coming from inside us sometimes the interpretation of what people do how people act you think about that you will not stop yourself Eliab, a brother of David, will not stop you. The stature of Goliath will not stop you. Anything in this old, wide world will not stop you. A great army of ambassadors that the Lord has raised up now, and we're going to the world, and we announce to the world whether they are hearing or they are not hearing, I announce to the world, the champions are coming. Yeah. The army of the Lord is coming. Yeah. And I announce to those demons and to those evil powers, clear out of the way. Yeah. The ambassadors of God, of Christ, they are coming. Yeah. And it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, for a great door and effectual is opened unto me and there are many adversaries many adversaries did they stop paul did they stop paul he said have kept the faith did he stop him he said i have finished my cause did he stop him he said now a crown of righteousness is laid up for me did he stop him he didn't look at the adversaries he looked at the great door and effectual that was opened unto him don't look at the negative the positive is heavier is greater is mightier and you are going to be an achiever. Achiever. Where is he? Achiever. Where is she? Great door. God has opened before you. Nobody will shut it. Let's rise up and pray and talk to the Lord. A great and effectual door is opened unto you now. And the Lord will keep that door open. And you will be an achiever. The power of the Lord will not cease in your life. Whatever you tell the Lord now, that's exactly what you will do. Whatever you tell the Lord now, that's exactly what he will do. You are called. He has called you. You, have, you are chosen. Remember the prediction. Remember the prophecy. And if the prophecy for the world is being fulfilled, how about the prophecy for the watchmen and the workmen and the world messengers? 
the sinners are fulfilling their own prophecies A backsliders are fulfilling their own prophecies their love waxing cold why wouldn't you a believer why wouldn't you a soldier in the army of the Lord why wouldn't you an ambassador fulfill the prophecy and prediction concerning you widening consecration widen that consecration widen that commitment be willing to do much more than you have done in the past be willing to go higher than how high you have gone before and be willing to surrender to yield to give up more than you have ever done before and then there will be a wonderful confirmation of his word it's not your stature he confirms it's not your title he confirms it's not your natural ability he confirms he confirms his word it's not your gender he confirms a man or a woman he confirms the word the wonderful confirmation of his word let your prayer match the prediction let your prayer match the promise he has given he shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem in judea in samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth let the prayer come from the depth of your heart he'll turn you to be another man another woman power 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 that activates you that moves you and the people who see you they'll know it's not the human spirit it's not the natural spirit moving you greater faith greater faith let that faith rise greater for greater exploits in evangelism greater focus concentrate don't be here and there, up and down, to and fro. A man of one purpose, a man of one persuasion. 
a man of one preoccupation focused a man of one pursuit focused faith focus fervency let the dormant spirit wake up Well, let a dozing, sleeping, slumbering spirit wake up. Fervent. Fervent. Fervent prayer. Fervent passion. Fervent pursuit. Don't allow your spirit to sleep. Fervent in ministry. And there's a price to pay. A price to pay. To penetrate, you pay the price. To rise. To work. To do. To succeed. To achieve, to pass the mark, to exceed the limits, pay the price. No idleness, pay the price. No loafing around, pay the price. Persevere, go on, don't be tired, don't be weary, don't look at the negative, look at the door that is open before you in Jesus name we pray life will never be the same again your ministry will never be the same again. Amen. Even your enemies, they will not be as strong as they were before in Jesus' name. Amen. All the things that will try to stop you, remember, those things are going to stop before you get there. Amen. You are now unstoppable. Amen. Say, I am unstoppable. I am, I am unstoppable from the depth of your heart I am unstoppable, am unstoppable. don't say any other word don't say any contrary word my brother my sister daughter of destiny son of destiny 
Don't allow any other word to come into your heart. If anybody says you are stoppable, turn your ears away from them. We sing, give us an Elijah today. We sing, give us an Ezekiel today. That these are the days of power. How do I sing? And then I don't understand. I am going to be the fulfillment of my song. You'll be the fulfillment of the prophecy. Amen. The fulfillment of the prediction. Amen. You'll go where you have never gone. Amen. You'll do what you have never done. Amen. You will see exploits, experiences you have never seen. Amen. I believe. Blessed is she and blessed is he that believes. For there shall be a performance of those things that were told her, told him from the Lord. Amen. Rest up your hand. Father, we thank you. You had a purpose in mind for bringing GCK to Lusaka, September 2023. You had us in mind. You urge my brother in mind. You urge my sister, daughter in mind. You urge every participant in mind. You knew we will be here. You knew that the dormant spirit will have to wake up. You knew ahead of time what we were here. How we will pray and what we will receive in prayer. Lord, I pray, fulfill your word on everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. That spirit of tiredness come out in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who have faced the fire and those who have faced the smoke and those who have faced the strong wind and now the wind has gone from outside to the inside and is trying to quench the light inside. Lord, I pray every contrary wind, every sin that is depressing, every sin that is stressful, every sin that makes us feel, I cannot, I cannot. I cannot go on anymore. Oh Lord, drive them out in Jesus' name. Lord, this is your work. The work of creation. Create, oh Lord, a new spirit. A new heart. A new passion. A new power. A new championship. A new ambassadorial spirit in everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. You make the weak strong. Amen. Therefore, Lord, I pray all your people, they're your people, they're your servants, they're your ministers, men and women. Lord, I pray, replace their weakness with supernatural strength in Jesus' name. Amen. They are not weak anymore. Amen. I am not weak anymore. Amen. Let the weak say, I am, I am strong. The strength of heaven, the power of heaven, the passion from heaven, the penetration from heaven, the prize from heaven, and all the gifts from heaven. Give distribute to everyone without exception. Amen. And as we go out, we go out as the army of the Lord. As ambassadors for the king. And I pray failure will become strange to you. Failure will become foreign to you. As you go, you go in the power of the Lord. You go in the spirit of the Lord. You go, you walk. You come back with testimony. Amen. And the Lord affirm and confirm your ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. We have read about others. Now we we'll read about you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. It is done. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 
I receive. Thank you, Lord. You make a new man, a new woman out of me. The world around you will see it. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah.